Good afternoon, everybody. My name is uh, Jason Clark. And um, as Mary Catherine mentioned, I'll be talking about my uh, doctoral research at George Mason. Um, just a few notes before I get my, uh, my uh, presentation started. Um, in the program, you'll see the title of my talk. That happens to be the title of my entire dissertation. Uh, I thought it was kind of a very difficult task to boil down seven years of doctoral research into a 15-minute presentation. So with some good uh, advice some good feedback during my dry run, I'm going to kind of concentrate my talk on sort of the last phase of my research, which, which uh, happens to lend nicely into um, this session on human factors. Um, also, in case it's not clear, um, my research um, is through, was through George Mason. It wasn't um, funded by any DOD sponsor or wasn't part of any lens or line funding stream. So that's where my talk might differ a little bit. So um, what I'll be talking about today is understanding users' perceptions of cloud storage privacy. When I say cloud storage, um, in the context of my talk, it's basically going to be on web-based email, uh, for example, uh, Gmail. And so really what we're trying to get at um, is why do people store um, their passwords in the clear? Why do people store images on Google Mail? Um, is it just because they're unaware of any attacks? They don't really care about any um, consequences? Um, perhaps they just want to participate in the kind of the fun factor of being part of a social networking site, being part of Facebook. So that's really what the topic is going to be, try to understand um, how users, um, the rationale for why users store information such as passwords and images on the cloud. Um, to this end, we um, did uh, th basically three different things. We um, did interviews, had our participants complete surveys, and actually ran um, some software tools. Uh, my research is joint work with uh, Chris Kanich at University of Illinois Chicago and uh, my advisor, um, Damon McCoy, who um, just took a job at ICSI, uh, part of Cal Berkeley. So. Okay, so to try to set the stage, some context for this, um, billions of people use cloud-based storage for their um, files. Again, when I say cloud-based storage, I'm talking about Google Mail, for example, in, in this particular case. So, we found through interviews and discussions and re reading recent literature that it's really unclear as to why people store personal information um, online. One of the classic examples is people take a, photo uh, take a picture of their passport and save it up on the Google Mail, um, save, it up, save it up on their Google, uh, Gmail. And the reason they do that is they're fearful if they go on foreign travel, they lose their physical passport. At least they can have a passport to show um, you know, TSA and customs and get back into the country. That's just one kind of example. But in general, um, people have all kinds of pictures, as we learned. Um, some sensitive, some uh, might be embarrassing, some that they didn't even know that they had, that friends sent them. So that's really what, what we're trying to get at again. Um, and then we kind of set the stage as, do people accidentally store sensitive information? Do people have their clearance information, their equip form, a photocopy of that? saved on their Google Mail, that would be you know, useful for a hacker or something like that, to, or a cyber criminal to kind of get into. Um, so to complete our study, we literally um, recruited and interviewed 30 participants. Um, 30 isn't quite a lot, but we had you know, time and resource constraints. Uh, these 30 participants were from the general public. Uh, we basically just used a Craigslist ad and paid them um, money to kind of come in to a secure location at George Mason University campus. And again, our goal was to interact and understand their kind of their thoughts um, with respect to um, privacy and security issues um, on Google Mail. So of course, we had uh, IRB approval for this since we were dealing with live human factors. And again, we talked about um, surveys. We had them do a preliminary survey to get information such as demographics, um, how they value passwords, how they value their images. And then we uh, then run uh, two pieces of custom software. Uh, I'll get into the custom software in a few slides. And then lastly, we had a sort of an exit interview, a discussion um, to try to get more detail into the uh, answers that they um, gave us during the survey. Um, now spoiling the, uh, the uh, results, um, we found that the majority of the users stored private photos in the cloud that they did not intend to upload, meaning that they just kind of made a mistake or were unaware that these images were up on like their Google Mail account. And what was interesting is that after we presented some of our software to them, as I'll get into later, people were like, whoa, uh, I didn't know I had that many photos. I didn't know I had pictures of my ex-girlfriend. I didn't know I had pictures of me 
at a party. So yeah, I would love to delete them. I wouldn't want my employer looking at these or something like that. <clears throat> and so in general, our study highlights a sort of a mismatch between user expectation and reality. So therefore, um, tools such as the ones we designed um, might help um, protect uh, users' privacy, of course, assuming that they're easy to use tools, they're fast, they're customizable, and they're, you know, again, easy without much of a learning curve. So does anybody know who these two people are? So uh, on your right should be pretty obvious, Sarah Palin. Uh, the left is David Kernel. So you may, may have remembered this from September, I think, 2008. So uh, what the gentleman did, that's in quotes, um, he basically was able to guess um, security questions from Yahoo to essentially break into um, Sarah Palin's email. Now, this is kind of a you know, set up kind of an example, but just imagine if you know, Sarah did have um, personal information, contact information, government information, pictures that, sh that wouldn't, she wouldn't want leaked, that sort of thing. Um, you know, David could have really done a lot of damage. Um, so that's sort of the idea. You know, did Sarah know exactly what email that she had in there? Did she realize that, um, maybe, did she realize um, that she might have sensitive information in there? That sort of thing. So that's sort of looking at the password. Does anybody know who these people are? So since I only have 10 minutes left, I'll just tell you. Uh, the guy on the right is uh, Jerry James Abrahams. And then um, the woman in the uh, gown or whatever, she was uh, Miss Teen USA Cassidy Wolf. And so uh, what he did was um, basically hack into her webcam and um, leak photos. You can use your imagination from there. Um, so again, you know, he didn't quite break into her email account, but again, he could leak her photos, uh, sort of blackmail her um, into giving him money to return her photos and obviously just cause a lot of damage. So if you think about it this way, um, all users you know, sort of have sort of their cloud of information. So if you looked at my Google Mail account, you might see a picture of my passport. You might see a picture of my driver's license. I actually did have a picture of my driver's license because um, I was trying to get a refund on some, uh, when United lost my baggage, so they had to match my address and name. So they asked me for a license, so I scanned it and sent it through email. Um, you may see passwords. Uh, I play fantasy football, so I have like, you know, passwords like that, you know, password resets, things I might not care about, and also passwords that I might care about. And then there's just random pictures. Um, Jill and IRB said I couldn't use pictures of my friends, so I just picked a picture of myself. Um, and so what our software can do, um, again, this is uh, actually out of University of Illinois, Chicago. It's called Cloud Sweeper. And what it aims to do is, looking at your account, it tries to put a price tag on it. So um, I've had Google Mail for a while, and it's um, about you know, 10 years. And I have like over 10,000 emails. So you know, I kind of think of myself as a security conscious person. But my account, you might think it's a lot, you might think it's not enough, um, is worth $23. If someone were to hack into my account, take all the information out there, um, they might be able to sell it on the open market for $23. Uh, if you had more sensitive information, um, banking, financial, medical, maybe this value goes up. So again, are user decisions rational with respect to convenience and privacy, or are they just unaware of the risk? That's really, again, the heart of this study. And then also, if we can make it easy um, for the users to sort of visually see their images, um, again, if you have 10,000 messages, unless you search for like .jpeg, you might kind of you know, have a hard time finding what, exactly, what pictures exactly you have in your account. So again, this is the software tools. Um, the first one, Cloud Sweeper. Um, it, what it does is it scans authentic Gmail accounts for clear text passwords. As I showed in the previous slide, it takes these passwords and it says, OK, if a hacker were to get these passwords, what value would it be? It also shows, um, you kind of can hover over it. And in clear text, it can show you what all your passwords are. And the idea is you can go in and delete those emails containing passwords. And the whole objective of Cloud Sweeper is to kind of protect the user in the event of a complete compromise. Complete compromise would be if someone were to hack into your account, basically taking all of your information and selling it. You know, is there ways to either delete passwords that are contained in email or redacting them? And Cloud Sweeper has the ability to do both of those things. Uh, yeah, send. user can delete, encrypt, and uh, redact, redact passwords as part of Cloud Sweeper. So um, Cloud Sweeper, by the way, is publicly offered. It's hosted on the University of Illinois Chicago website. So if you Google Cloud Sweeper, it'll be one of the first hits. Uh, you can put in your information and you know, trusted university, and they'll scan your email for you. 
Um, Google Image Extractor, uh, this is not open to the public. Um, I should have mentioned before, we have a paper under submission right now at CHI 2015. And uh, this software basically goes into Google Mail. And what it does is it takes all of your pictures in Google Mail and then export them into a folder on your desktop. So you can see all of the, message, all of the um, images that you have. And the idea here would be that you could delete them from this one folder and it would automatically delete them for your Google Mail account. So during our study, we sort of were trying to investigate and understand you know, what consequences did users feel like would happen to them if their uh, images were made public. So an overwhelming amount, 95%, which we thought was a little high. Again, we only had 30 participants, so you know, for the statisticians in, in the room, that might not be statistically relevant. But still, overwhelming amount of people stated embarrassment was the number one consequence that we saw. Um, other people thought maybe incrimination and um, extortion were the other three. We um, also, again, interviewed our participants. And we asked them several questions. These are just four of the more interesting ones. And we kind of the point of this slide is to show the wide spectrum of answers that we got. So for example, we asked, what are your privacy and security concerns? And some people said, pretty much everything. I'm scared of everything. There's a boogeyman in every closet. Um, and other people said, I don't see any threats. What are you talking about? This is a waste of my time. Can I just get my $50 for participating and be on my way? Um, we also asked, you know, with the recent hacks at you know, Target, Home Depot, um, even um, some other ones that are less popular, um, did news stories about uh, security and privacy matter? And a lot of people thought, eh, yes or no, it depends. If I was really affected by this or if I shopped at this store, then yes, I would really pay attention, um, things like that. And one of the more interesting ones was people really, if they were a victim of these kind of attacks, they had no idea how to respond. We asked like kind of the legality question, like what would you do if you were a victim? And people said, I don't know, I'd just call my mom. So, <laughs> so um, I know I have a few minutes left, but uh, the general takeaways of this, um, we feel that the poor security practice by our participants through our interviews and the results of them running our software, um, a lack of time. People don't really have a lot of time to devote to security and privacy, and so they just sort of are, you know, whatever, I'll just delete that photo later, or I don't care. And, that sort of idea, and they forget to you know, delete the photo. Others, um, convenience. Like I said before, in the case of the passport, people want a convenient way to access their passport in a worst case scenario. They think the idea of them being stuck in a foreign country and not being able to get back in the US is worse than some random person hacking into their account and stealing their passport information. Um, other people think, that just can't happen to me. Why would a cyber criminal target me? Um, oblivious, right, that's another one. And people like to participate in Google Mail. They like to be able to send pictures and stuff like that to one another, so kind of participating in the fun factor of um, the internet. And similarly, uh, joining the conversation, being part of social networking sites and stuff like that. And we also learned that most users would really uh, welcome tools, um, such as the ones we developed that Cloud Suite with Cloud Sweeper and the Google Image Extractor, if they were fast, uh, made it easy to use, and they were customizable. Those are the three areas that kept resonating with our uh, participants. So um, in conclusion, uh, we investigated how the general public behaves. Um, we also seem to learn that most users value uh, convenience over privacy and security concerns. And the um, majority of the participants accepted the risk of leaving their image vulnerable. But again, if we offer them these tools, they can kind of have a way to protect themselves um, in the worst case scenario. Um, we utilize Cloud Sweeper to measure the impact and behavior of participants. And um, again, it's not publicly available yet, but we had really good promising results with our Google Image Extractor. Most of the participants said that they would definitely use it, if, again, if it was easy to use and fast and customizable. So this is a well-known risk to people storing their passwords and images in the clear. And hopefully, uh, our analysis kind of brings this uh, issue to light you know, even further. And again, if we could offer some tools to help sort of um, help the users navigate the uh, pitfalls on the internet and social networking and cloud-based storage sites, that would really be uh, helpful to everybody. Um, just want to acknowledge the people I ha um, that helped me. Um, really, Chris um, started this project at University of Illinois Chicago. This was from NSF Career Award Funding. Uh, my advisor, Damon. Um, he was a faculty at George Mason since went to ICSI at Cal Berkeley, as I said. And then other people um, through 
um, my dissertation committee at George Mason and uh, my management here at, um, at the SCI. Uh, this is my contact information, so if you cleared your calendars hoping for a talk on profiling and tracking, I apologize. Um, you can certainly um, come talk to me anytime. I'll make time for you to go over my whole dissertation with you. Um, but no, in seriousness, uh, please email um, or um, call me. I can show you the demo and anything like that. So thank you very much.